As Barack Obama's chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, explained that the administration would never let a crisis go to waste. And this is certainly true of the horrific massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Mr. Obama has appointed Vice President Joe Biden to head a task force on gun violence that has been instructed to come up with a concrete gun control proposal by January. Many politicians and pundits have seized upon the massacre as a pretext to seize guns from law-abiding public, beginning with the so-called assault rifle. Some, like New York Democratic Senator Charles Schumer, say that the Second Amendment needs to be modified. Others, including former Seattle Police Chief Norm Stamper, have called for that amendment to be repealed outright. But the gun grabbers may soon find themselves thwarted by technology through 3D printing technology. It's possible to fabricate a single-use firearm, and that technology is going to become less expensive and more sophisticated very soon. How can gun grabbers and social engineers overcome the freedom-enhancing potential of technology? We'll discuss this with independent journalist and intelligence analyst James Corbett. James, welcome to the show. Uh, we're talking about 3D printing technology. It's really cutting edge. How widely available is this technology right now? Well, I think something that would be pretty surprising for a lot of people out there is that this technology has actually been around for a few decades now, and it's just starting to really hit the, the mainstream commercially. And I think in the next few years, people are going to start seeing it more and more available uh, sort of at their local stores, etc. But uh, just to give a perspective for people, back 10 years ago, it would have cost in the tens of thousands of dollars for even a budget 3D printer. But right now you can get a good quality 3D printer desktop uh, variety for under $2,000. So it's starting to, to reach that price point where it's going to start filtering into people's homes. And because it is such a really, truly revolutionary technology and bringing manufacturing down to the, the local level, down to the individual level, uh, it, it's really going to have, uh, I think, a profound effect on the economy. Now, James, I want to note here that you're calling in via Skype from Japan, utilizing another cutting-edge technology here. Uh, so, But being in Japan, how do you see technology developing uh, before it comes to the United States? Is it, do you see 3D printing more in uh, Japan where you are? Unfortunately not. I think that this is going to be something of a global phenomenon when it hits. And I think we're starting to see that more and more with the development and the, uh, the introduction of technologies. Um, it was, uh, I think, where there was a more significant lag uh, in previous years. Uh, and I, that was noticeable for me, for example, when I first came to Japan a decade ago. And the, the cell phones here were light years ahead of what they had back in, in America. But um, now it's pretty much at the same level and technologies tend to be rolled out almost simultaneously. And with this 3D printing revolution, I think this is something that, uh, again, there's, there's a cutting edge of people in all countries all around the world who have caught on to this and who are, who are on that leading edge. And I don't think it's really specific to any country. So I think this is one of those uh, examples of how technology is really leveling the, the playing field between people of all different countries. And it's more a question of who's kind of got their ear to the ground and is aware of the technology rather than where people are actually living. James, do you, do you believe that th this technology could be used for good as well as for bad? Absolutely. A, a technology generally is a double-edged sword, but I think that certainly this uh, 3D printing, I, I do see the, the absolute uh, incredible nature of this technology as being something that could truly transform transform our society in a lot of different ways and transform it for the better. Of course, uh, like any technology, it can also be used to, to commit uh, horrible acts as well. And uh, it's always a question of balancing that. But uh, again, the question that often comes up when it comes to things like this is, should we be trying to, to limit it? Should we be trying to restrict this technology? Should we be trying to impose limitations on what it can do in order to stop it getting into the wrong hands? And, uh, and should and government I, and, have a say? And, over and that's that. what I do. I, I want to ask you.